Hi, my name is John Mark, and I'm a pastor who has been recently concerned uh, about a movement that is being called the Hebrew Roots Movement or uh, Torah Observers. And many don't like those titles, and, and there really is a wide range of beliefs in this movement. Uh, there's no uh, set doctrinal statement. Uh, so some of the things that we talk about in these videos may not represent everyone, uh, but our uh, intention is not so much to debate, uh, but to defend the truth of the gospel and, and to really uh, guard the church from error uh, and to help anyone who unknowingly stumbles across what we believe are dangerous teachings. Uh, so we hope these videos will help you. Blessings. Why did the Apostle Paul take a Nazarite vow? Uh, that's a question that's perplexed many people, especially as they read over Acts 18. And for good reason. Uh, we see here in this passage uh, that after this, Paul stayed many days longer and then took leave of the brothers and set sail for Syria and with him Priscilla and Aquila. At Sancria, he had cut his hair for he was under a vow. So uh, we need to figure out uh, what this vow is and who it is taking it. Uh, some people have said that it's Aquila taking this vow. I don't think that the text allows for that reading. I do think the Apostle Paul is taking this vow. And the question then becomes, uh, what is this vow? And I do think it's the Nazarite vow, and, and, and we can see that uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, those who are not familiar with the Torah or with the Mosaic law may even be wondering, what is a Nazarite vow? And so let's go back to uh, Numbers uh, chapter 6, where the Nazarite vow is explained. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When either a man or woman makes a special vow, the vow of a Nazarite, to separate himself to the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. He shall drink no vinegar made from wine or strong drink, and shall not drink any juice of grapes or eat grapes, fresh or dried. All the days of his separation he shall eat nothing that is produced by the grapevine, not even the seeds or the skins. Now that's not related to uh, Acts 18, but this is. All the days of his vow of separation, no razor shall touch his head until the time is completed for which he separates himself to the Lord. He shall be holy. This is an issue of holiness. He shall let the locks of his hair of his head grow long. All the days that he separates himself to the Lord, he shall not go near a dead body. Now this gets into verse uh, 9. And if any man dies very suddenly beside him, and he defiles his consecrated or holy head, then he shall... Shave his head on the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day, he shall shave it. Now, I believe that's what Paul is doing and has done in Acts 18, 18. So it says he has cut his hair. Why? For he was under a vow. So it does seem that the Apostle Paul is taking a Nazarite vow and we need to ask, why is he doing this? Uh, because the argument has been put forward by some that Paul is still under the law. He is still keeping the Torah. Uh, he is still obeying the Mosaic law. That is uh, taught by some. And the question is, does Paul do that? Is that what Paul is doing? And I think we need to let Paul answer that question for himself, which he does uh, answer this question. To, in fact, it's to the same church that he takes the Nazarite vow, uh, is in the city of Corinth and around the people of the city of Corinth. And then later to the church of Corinth, he explains what he was doing. Uh, chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians, he says, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. Win what? Win them to Christ. He's, he's seeking to evangelize. He's doing missions. And he says, to the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not myself being under the law. 
that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ. So he's not just law, doing lawlessness. He's under the law of Christ. He's working uh, in love. And, uh, but he is to Gentiles, uh, ministering in ways that, Gentile, that are effective to minister the gospel to Gentiles, whereas to Jews, uh, he is uh, he's oftentimes doing Jewish things or keeping elements of the Mosaic law in order to not be a stumbling block to them as he brings the gospel into that context. So I think what Paul's doing is contextualizing the gospel for the sake of missions. In order to win Jews, he's going to be like a Jew. In order to win Greeks, he's going to be like a Greek in order to win them. Now, I want to give an example uh, of Paul doing this in another place. He does this also in regards to circumcision, which again, under the Mosaic law, uh, the entry point into the Mosaic law, if you were a Gentile coming into Israel, you had to receive the sign of circumcision to be a part of Israel, to be a participant in the covenant and in the covenant benefits. And here we have Paul uh, in Acts 16.3 with Timothy, he uh, took him and it says circumcised him. So it looks like Paul is still keeping the Mosaic law. He's circumcising Timothy uh, because of the Jews. Now that's actually important because in the book of Acts, uh, 85 times we see this word Jews comes up, but it's almost without, uh, without exception, it's being used about those outside the church, those who are not believers uh, he's, it's not talking about Jewish converts to Christianity, but those outside of Christianity uh, that are opposed to Christianity. So Paul is circumcising Timothy, he says, because of the Jews, because of the unbelievers, in order to not be a stumbling block to them. Why? For they knew that his father was a Greek. All right. So he didn't want Timothy to be a stumbling block to him as he ministers to a Jewish, in a Jewish context. So to Timothy, he circumcised him in order to not put a stumbling block to that Jewish audience. Now, here's what's interesting. When we get into Galatians 2, something entirely different happens. And let me read this regarding Titus. So it says, but even Titus, who was with me, was not, not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Now, according to the law, as a Greek, he must be circumcised. But he was not, Titus was not forced to be circumcised. Yet because of, he says, false brothers, secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ, uh, Christ Jesus, so that they might bring us into slavery. To them, we did not yield in submission even for a moment. Why? So that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. We did not circumcise according to the law. Why? So that the truth of the gospel might be preserved. Uh, brothers and sisters, I would submit to you that how you treat the Mosaic law uh, matters greatly. Um, to contextualize, to win Jews, seems to be a permissible thing to do. Uh, to keep the law uh, in order to be under the law in the Mosaic sense, as Israel did, uh, seems to put at risk the truth of the gospel. Uh, this is a major issue. I, I hope this has been helpful to you. Blessings.